Hi folks, Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. We're going to be viewing today the Samsung Galaxy S3, the Samsung Galaxy S3, and you get a chance to see it boot up here. Now, we originally did a uh, review of this phone. I've been I had a chance to use it for over a month now, and it just updated to the Android version of 4.04. <clears throat> so, in knowing the phone more and spending a good month with it, we want to give you an update and update the review so that you can see uh, some of our best perceptions and uh, experience with the phone so far, and we can talk about some of the great things about it. Now, as far as I'm concerned, overall, it's to me one of the best Android phones that's out there on the market. I love the size of it, love the speed of it. Uh, it's freaking awesome. And we're going to show you some benchmarking tests and some other things uh, with photography, and we'll get really in-depth here uh, to uh, show you some of the great things about the product, and I really do enjoy it uh, for over the last month that I've had it. Now, this phone is from AT&T, provided to me by AT&T. Thank you, AT&T, for uh, giving us the phone. Uh, so, uh, this comes on the AT&T service. Keep that in mind if you're thinking of Verizon. Uh, I believe Verizon also carries this phone and a few other carriers, uh, and possibly, I think, in the UK, too. They do really well with the Samsung. <clears throat> now, uh, one of the great things about the Samsung is uh, some of its different features. It's got a giant screen. You're looking at a 48 inch screen and uh, it's got a 1280 by 720 which is uh, 360 ppi HD Super AMOLED screen it's got 16 million colors with Corning Gorilla Glass on it it's got um, 2100 milliamps of battery capacity which is pretty huge uh, it gives you up to 8 hours in talk time standby up to 8.3 days its size dimensions are 5.38 and 2.78 by 0.34 inches thick. Uh, it's really nice. It's amazingly thin. Uh, it reminds me a lot in the thinness of the HTC One X. Uh, and I almost feel like throwing it as a Frisbee sometimes. I find myself holding it like this. It just feels so thin and easy to play with and hold. <clears throat> with memory, you're looking up to 16 gigs of internal memory storage. Uh, with expandable memory storage, you're looking up to 64 gigabytes, and a memory format you can use is in micro SD card, and it has a maximum RAM of up to 2 gigabytes in the AT&T version. Um, with the cameras, what you're looking at is 8 megapixel LED flash. It's got zero lag shutter speed, burst shot function, best photo feature, face recognition tag, and buddy photo share, where you can share these with other folks. Uh, they also have uh, Galaxy phones. Um, and you've got four times digital zoom and a front-facing camera, 1.9 megapixels. And of course, it records in 1080p. Now, um, some of the other aspects of the Samsung that we really like, we really love the big screen. It's very fast. Let me go ahead and show you the OS so that uh, for those who go, that isn't the right OS, you can, we'll show you here that we're running on 4.04. .04. Didn't notice much uh, difference in going to 4.04. .04. Uh, for the Android, uh, most of the stuff was uh, kind of behind the scenes and performance based, so didn't notice too much of the changes with it. I really love the phone. Like I say, it's my favorite Android phone out of the four or five that I own, um, and uh, it just rocks. Uh, for a long time there, the HTC One X was one of my favorites because of its thinness, speed, and re and relatively uh, you know updated greatness. But the Samsung. Uh, Galaxy S3. If you're a Android lover, I would highly recommend you get this phone. Uh, it's great. It's awesome, and it's uh, it's just killer. So let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the details. Across the front here, <clears throat> you have a home button, and this is a button in and of itself. Where some Android phones just have a touch tap element to them, and then what you have is when you do activate these, you can take and see that there's a menu pop up. Uh, the lights up and also a back button and these take an illuminate you can control and customize the uh, length of how long they're illuminable <clears throat> illuminable is that a word uh, and you can of course have your backspace as to how well these light up what's nice is they don't stay lit up which can help you save some of your battery life battery life isn't too bad on the android uh, samsung uh, Galaxy. I notice it does a little bit better than most Android phones. Of course, most Android phones don't have the amount of battery that this does, but uh, it it does 
pretty much about the same when it comes to the burn. It really depends on how much you set up your Android phone and how much you run your notifications, etc., etc. You've got some uh, sensors that are in here, and then you've got your front-facing camera. It kind of looks like a grayish black, uh, except when you turn in a certain light, then you can see the deep, uh, beautiful blue that it is. It does come in three colors. There's the Garnet Red, this is called the Pebble Blue, and there's also the Marble White version that you can get, and those are from AT&T in those formats. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at some other angles of the phone. On the back, you're going to have you have a, uh, it looks like kind of a steel finish, but it's just a simple plastic casing. Uh, it's got a flash here. It's got your camera here, which is raised a little bit from off the back of the uh, back of the phone. Uh, one thing I'm really discouraged about is it's, it rests the camera against the uh, desktop or whatever you put on, especially on the bottom portion of it. Uh, real important to get a case for the, H H uh, for the Samsung uh, Galaxy S3. Uh, we profiled a number of them on the ChrisVossShow.com. Very important to protect that camera and make sure it doesn't get scratched and you end up marring uh, the great uh, photographic capabilities the phone has. <clears throat> Speakers in the back. Uh, this is another thing I wasn't too excited about, the down-facing speaker. I find myself most times when I'm using speakerphone or trying to listen to something, putting the phone face down, which is kind of uh, a challenge if I'm doing a speakerphone situation or if I need to dial more digits, etc., etc. Uh, I really wish the speaker was not in that place. That's one of the downsides I didn't like about the phone. The speaker works fairly good. Uh, there's not too many... Uh, too many uh, bad things I can say about it other than it's down facing and faces against the desk. If you want to look at your phone when you're having a conversation, it's plowing into the, the desktop so it's tough to hear. You've got, of course, the Galaxy S3 logo at the bottom here. Let's take a look around about. Okay, now looking at the top of the phone, what we're looking at is we've got an earpiece for your earphone that's in here, and we've got a uh, microphone button that picks up your sound. Now one thing I do like about this phone <clears throat> is a lot of the Android phones will have, especially the ATC, HTC's, will have a power button on top of the phone. I really dislike that feature. It's really annoying because you have to, if you're trying to turn the phone on with one hand, you've got to use a second hand or a special, you know, long grip if you can to be able to turn the thing on from the top. It's not very convenient to me. So I love how the Samsung does not have the power button on the top. On the bottom of the Samsung S3, we have a uh, Galaxy S3, I should say. We have a uh, charger plug-in for your charger, and then we also have another mic area or hole for uh, picking up sound. Now, on both sides, the uh, Samsung S3 has got a really, really nice, beautiful lines that cut and curve, as you can see with the body design. I love the look of that and the feel of it. And we'll show you how the back comes off here in a second. Uh, they have a nice small rocker button that's on the side. It's on the left-hand side. You normally find with the many uh, the H of the HTC phones and Android phones, the uh, volume rockers are on the right side, where this is on the left. I actually like that a whole lot better. The problem I have is usually when I grip a phone, <clears throat> I'm usually... Uh, using my index fingers more than I'm using my thumb and I tend to take the power up and down on some of the HTC phones if I press and hold the button for any great length of time um, or you know sometimes inadvertently I'm turning them up and down so I really love the rocker button which this is the up and down rocker button on the left side of the Galaxy S3 I found after a time of using it too that it just is much more convenient now on the right hand side there's just a very small power button. It works really well and you can see of course the sleek lines here but I really do enjoy the small power button being on the right hand side as opposed to the top of the phone. Uh, it works really well. The buttons are uh, uh, you, you know they're not hard to press but they're not easy to press either where they uh, can easily uh, activate the phone and cause you to bail out of stuff you don't want to be into or cause the volume to go up and down on the other side. So really like how the setup is. Buttons work great um, and everything else. Okay, so now along the top you can see there's a little hole here and what this is uh, able to do is you can stick your thumb in there and you can pull off the plastic backing. Plastic backing is really thin, kind of almost scarily so, uh, but I have actually dropped the phone a couple times and it survived very well. Uh, it tends to be 
I think light and durable enough to where it takes a bit of shock absorption to it. So uh, have some, I've had some good results with dropping it. In fact, uh, I actually dropped it and it fell on its face. And what was interesting is the weight brought it squarely down on its face and didn't scratch at all and it fell almost perfectly like a cat. Um, but I would highly recommend that with the beautiful big screen you definitely get a nice case. Now you can see here <coughs> as we've taken off the plastic back that we have an area where we can put a micro SD card in here so you can have the additional stored memory that's in there uh, you've got a place for a sim card you've got your battery which is removable you can pull this baby out and in at will so what the nice thing about this phone is that if you want to have additional batteries to take with you and carry with you you could do that and be able to swap them out at will so you can see here that everything else is exposed and uh, pretty decent. Let's go ahead and put the back back on. Back snaps on pretty easy and quick. No problems there and one is back in business. Now in taking a look at benchmarking standards you can see here that the uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 performs, uh, outperforms pretty much uh, all the different competition that's out there including the most recent HTC One X, Asus Transformer Prime, uh, Motorola Atrix, Galaxy uh, Samsung Tab 10.1, uh, etc, etc on down the line. And we found with a lot of different testing and benchmark comparisons with other phones, uh, it, when it comes to an Android phone, it far exceeds uh, just about anything we have. Uh, in our arsenal. So it definitely rock and rolls. Uh, the HTC One X was a great fast film when it came out, but as you can see the Samsung Galaxy S3 uh, surpasses it by quite a bit and benchmarking does really well. Let's take a look at something else. Here's another score that's uh, given by the N22 uh, benchmarking app on the Android. You can see here it scored 6558 uh, CPU 3119 RAM 1083 pretty much four and a half points in total score in comparison to other phones as to what its feedback has been given at this point in time and you can see the battery low notification. One other thing I do love about this phone before we get into other benchmarks that we'll talk about is I love how you can take it out of uh, standby mode by just simply swiping on the screen. You can see your swipe screen to unlock so you can swipe anywhere on the screen and pull it out of unlock. I really really love that feature. It makes it very awesome. In GPS testing, you can see that it scores very well. It did very well compared to other Android phones that we have. Uh, it certainly found uh, more GPS satellites and uh, kept itself active, so it was great at keeping itself up on par that way. Color-wise, the screen is awesome. It's got very vibrant colors to it that perform exceptionally well. Your greens, reds, blues. Um, you can see some of the gradient uh, colors here as they adjust. Um, and in the comparison videos we've done with other phones, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S3 usually outperforms them in quality of color and beauty. This really makes a difference in your gaming experience when you're gaming with the Samsung uh, Galaxy S3, uh, which is an awesome phone to game on, uh, not only because of its speed, but because of its wonderful screen and its size of screen, which makes it very awesome. Okay, so as we talked about before, I really like the, I like the being able to pull it out of... Um, pull it out of standby by simply swiping the screen. I love that feature. The ring feature that I find on other phones, especially the HTC, I hate that because I have to go to one place on the screen and be able to utilize it. Sometimes that's not the most optimum place to have my hand at the time. So I love just being able to swipe anywhere on the screen. It's a giant screen so it's easy to get to. I don't have to, I can do it without really even having to look at the device which I really like so I can multitask that way with it. Notifications wise, I love the notifications menu that's in here. Across the top we have all the different key things that you may want to switch on and off. I'm always switching on and off my Bluetooth as I need it for calls um, and it's really great to have just a really quick way to swipe boom turn on Bluetooth get in and out and I'm good to go you can see here we can control GPS we can control sound screen rotation you have the ability to lock or unlock your screen rotation which is very cool uh, mobile data uh, you can turn that on or off power saving airplane mode and sync you all have these where you can easily click them without having to go into your settings menu 
You, of course, have your normal notifications that you would get within whatever you have set up on your phone uh, with apps, etc., etc. And, of course, you can easily access the settings button from here, which is really nice. You can see the setup here. I love the display of the settings menu. It looks really good compared to some of the other Android phones that I've seen. Uh, it's very color rich. Um, you've got, of course, your ability to uh, tether and portable hotspot on here. The Because of the speed of the phone and uh, everything else about it when it comes to just how awesome it rocks, it tethers very well and acts as a hotspot very well. Okay, so let's flip out of this and we'll go back. Um, let's see, we've got one more that we'll go back. Having these uh, buttons is really nice. The one thing I do miss with the home button is I do miss having the other Android features of where you just have a touch. With this, it is a button, so you have to find it and press. I actually like the touch ability of uh, other Android phones, so I don't like the home much uh, button as much, but it is good. There's no problems using it on the Galaxy Samsung S3. You can see the different modes here and uh, different things we can do in settings, etc., etc. Now, going back to our home screen, uh, you, of course, have your widgets and everything else that you can take and customize. And so, with the phone, you can take and edit, create folders, search, settings, and, of course, you have the ability to go in and in your settings. Now, with the menu, view, you, of course, have widgets and uh, apps and, and different things that you can take and do by holding your buttons, moving them around to different places, creating folders, etc., etc., just like you can on any other Android device. You can go into menu settings where you can create folders, search for stuff, edit stuff on your setup, etc., etc. In the editing, of course, you have the same seven different screens that you can take and utilize. You can customize with widgets, etc., etc., and you can take and do different things uh, with creating your screens, all that good stuff. Uh, let's take a look at one other thing that we want to take and go to here. Now, uh, to get to recent apps that you've used or apps that are currently open, you simply hold down the home button and it will bring a drop down screen where you can easily scroll through them. I like this feature very much as opposed to some of the ones where you swipe between screens. Uh, I just like the layout of it for some reason. The menu appeals to me a whole lot better. You can easily get in the tax ma uh, task manager and shut down tasks and all that good stuff. So easy to get in and out of that. Now one thing that's interesting about the uh, Samsung Galaxy S3 is it does come with an automatic brightness setting but there's a different brightness setting for both the phone itself there's also another setting in the camera area where you can display uh, as it replays photos and video what the brightness is of those as they display themselves and there's also a just separate adjustment brightness for the uh, browser uh, kind of caused some confusion because we're not used to seeing that in a lot of different phones and it's not very intuitive actually because uh, we had a hard time figuring out that there were three different settings and uh, you have to dig around. And okay, so in looking more of the operation of the Samsung, uh, taking a look at the phone dialing menu and there's several aspects here that are pretty unique that we think are pretty cool. You of course can see the layout here of the keypad for dialing, logs, favorites, contacts, etc. that you have access to. Um, I like the beautiful way the, the buttons are large enough to be able to press and, and work with. Uh, what's interesting too is the menu that you have available to you uh, where you can have speed dial settings, send message of course, but you also have call settings that are pretty cool. Uh, you have different call rejection modes that you can put in, uh, reject messages, call alert, answering and ending, uh, et cetera, et cetera, auto screen off during calls, accessory settings for calls, extra volume for calls. Now there's an extra volume button that can show up on the screen for calls when you're in a call. You can press a button that will show that uh, can give you more volume if you need it. Uh, many times you do with the speaker, like I said, being on the back of the phone if you're using it face down. I find I need to turn it up. So you can see I've got it checked here. Now what's really cool about the phone is it also has a in-call sound EQ settings thing. And what you can do is create personalized or in-call sound EQ pre presets, if you will, uh, and you can choose to what different presets work better for yourself in how you're 
uh, using the phone. So that can sometimes get you better sound on calls uh, as you're taking and doing them. Uh, call forwarding, of course, et cetera, et cetera, all that good stuff. Um, so you can go ahead and pre-program all these things, but we did find that was pretty interesting about the in-call uh, sound EQ settings where you can go in and manage those and get those to uh, sound differently for yourself, depending upon what you want to take and do. Let's take a look at additional settings if we can too. So uh, it looks like we've got caller ID, caller waiting, noise reduction that you can take and do, suppress background noise, and all that good stuff. So lots of different controls and settings, but we did find that EQ was pretty interesting in being able to um, walk around the product. Let's talk about the uh, camera now. So let's get into the camera thing. We, uh, we've had great results with the camera. We've liked the camera and how it's operated for us. Uh, you can see here the camera menu and we have up here on the uh, top right hand side the thing that will switch between your uh, camera and your video and so you can switch easily between those. You can see that it has uh, it will give us a white thing when it's focusing but it will also do a red um, when it's uh, sensing jiggling and uh, it's not able to focus and then of course it will go green when it focuses. So um, the uh, uh, let's take a look at a few of the things. You've of course got your shutter button to take and click here. Then you've got your uh, area to go into to see the photos that you've taken. Uh, you've got an easy menu here where you can switch between uh, several different focus, uh, macro, face detection, autofocus. You can switch between your um, on, off, auto flash. Uh, you can switch between different shooting modes that are available. You find many of these with the Android product, of course. You can search between front and back video. Looks like you got a shot of me there for a second. Um, and you can edit shortcut self, portrait, flash, shooting mode, uh, screen type, all the different things you could do with many cameras. You've got resolution changes you can make here where you can go all the way from 8 megapixels down to 0.3 megapixels. This can help you if you're sending video maybe over email. You don't want to send large files and pictures uh, to a friend or something of that nature. Um, lots of different controls and stuff that you can have here and you can set up. Now in taking a look at let's switch between video. On video you of course have the front and back switch controls and here you can switch between recording modes of normal or you can limit this for MMS text message sending. You of course can control your flash on and off here and of course you've got some settings for video where you can switch between different recording modes, exposure values, all that sort of good stuff, resolution, white balance, all that video quality, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, in taking a look at some of the photos that we have with the uh, Samsung S3, one thing that's really interesting is whenever I go from the camera to look at photos in the album, uh, the speed, there's a delay that's uh, really bothersome. Um, and it didn't get repaired in 4.04. .04. Maybe there's a reason it's there, I don't know. But it, it's really kind of annoying. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's annoying. Now, in looking at the pictures that you can see in uh, good light on the uh, Samsung, uh, here's some pictures you can take a look at uh, for us here. The color comes out really good in normal light situations. Uh, it picks up everything really well. There's not too much of a certain color uh, that's being enhanced where we've seen some Android phones where there's been some enhancements to the yellow, blues, and greens. Um, comes out with great colors, uh, very detailed pictures. Uh, you can't s say much more for the camera. It's a great camera when it comes down to it um, in well-lit situations. In video mode, uh, you can see it comes out very well in video mode. Uh, great sharpness and quality of screen. And uh, the, big, the big screen that you have to be able to watch any videos you take really make a difference in uh, being able to enjoy videos. Now, in low light situations, we weren't that impressed with the Galaxy Samsung S3. Uh, I'm sorry, I have an iPhone 4S that uh, takes great pictures in low light situations and I have to compare it to that. Uh, it also takes better pictures in flash situations like the one we have here. You can see here that 
Uh, this is a flash picture that we've taken in much of the background has been blown out and all we've really caused the foreground. Uh, this is one of the better flash pictures that I've been able to take with the Galaxy Samsung. And it's not that it doesn't take bad pictures in low light situations, it's just I've seen better uh, and I wish it could be better. So let's put it that way. Is it uh, better than other phones in the Android series? You'll have to watch our comparison series to really see. But I do think it does a really good job in uh, its colors and what it utilizes. Of course, you have uh, several different modes you can do with this where you can set up uh, burst modes and everything else uh, where it will shoot up to 20 shots at once. Uh, when you go to modes, let's flip over to camera, uh, where you can shoot up to, I think it's 20 shots at one time that you can take and shoot in uh, in a burst mode setting. And then you can also, let's see if I can get into the right setting here, in burst shot mode, you can it'll go through and take pictures and show you uh, and give you a chance to choose what the best shot is. And then you can choose the best shot and uh, it will erase the other ones. So a few different things you can do with uh, burst modes and taking multiple pictures and helping you get the best shot. We like the camera overall. Uh, very impressed with it. Um, still not sure why there's that huge delay there that you see right now. And going back to the album, the photo album, it's kind of annoying how long that takes. Uh, and after a while it gets really irritating to uh, switch between the two of them. So uh, overall, it's not too bad. Uh, it looks like it loads better if you've recently gone back to it. Um, the pictures we've taken are great. The video we've taken are great. Not You can't really see anything bad about the camera in the Samsung Galaxy S3 phone other than the low light situation. We liked it. Okay, so when it comes to the Android system of having apps and widgets, uh, I really like the layout on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Uh, it looks really nice. It's easy to find a lot of different widgets and apps and things that you want to take and plug in. Uh, and it presents very well given the huge screen that the Galaxy Samsung has. Uh, so uh, great layout with that. And I love being able to choose between all the different toys and customizations you can have with the widgets. In the end, overall, I love the Samsung Galaxy S3. It's my favorite Android phone so far. I really, really, really enjoy it and I love the experience. I find it competing very well with my attention for uh, that I also share with the iPhone 4S. Um, but uh, this is by far out of the four Android phones I have. Uh, my favorite and, and I'm super impressed with it. Great product. In fact, I'm secretly hoping that the iPhone 4S will come out with a screen as big as the Samsung uh, Galaxy S3. If you're in the market for an Android phone or a phone in particular, definitely check it out, especially if you love the Google product and the Android OS. Uh, it is the phone to get, in my opinion. Uh, thank you, AT&T, for providing the phones to us. Um, and you can be sure to check their website for pricing and uh, all the availability of the Samsung Galaxy S3 models. And, of course, they're available on other networks if you so choose to follow those networks. Um, so be sure to check our other comparisons, and we'll be doing comparisons here in the future of other Android phones and the iPhone 4 uh, with the uh, Samsung Galaxy S, be sure to check in S3, I should say. Be sure to check into those and be sure to check back to the ChrisVossShow.com. Samsung Galaxy S3, Chris Voss tested, Chris Voss approved. Love the phone. Go get one.